I want to help you understand this type of code using three key insights. Three, three. Anyway, three key insights that will help you understand this code. The first thing you have to understand is that D3 code is always split into two different areas. The first is data manipulation and the second area is DOM manipulation. So if we look at that same code from before, it's actually rendering this sort of bar chart. Yeah, it is actually the same code. So this bar chart comes from straight from the D3 documentation on how to build a bar chart. When you mouse over a, a bar, it colors red and it's nice and simple. Everything is labeled, has nice axes, and it works pretty great. And it takes just about 43 lines of this soupy code that is very difficult to understand and doesn't scream bar chart at you. But there are actually two parts inside this code that you can look at. They help you piece apart or tear apart what's actually happening. First, you have data manipulation. This is where we prepare our variables, load our data sets. This is where we're preparing our variables, setting up our D3 scales, which we're going to talk about in a bit, uh, loading our data sets, parsing them, and so on. So the first thing that Mike Bostock did in this example was to set up some margins, which help him space things out on, on his graph. Then he calculates the width and height of uh, that he has available to draw his thing, defines two D3 scales, which will help him translate between data and positions on the screen. And in this D3.tsv, blah, 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 here he's loading his data set, setting up the domains on his scales. We're going to talk about that in a bit, no worries. And all the way down here where is he, he's actually using the code that he set up to calculate from his data set to actual properties that he's putting in the DOM. That's the data manipulation part. Throughout the day, we're always going to keep data manipulation in D3 because D3 is really, really good at this stuff. It's one of the easiest, quickest things I've ever seen for just manipulating data and turning it into different data. And then we have the DOM manipulation part. This is where we use D3 or where people often use D3 to actually construct the DOM that goes, that renders in the browser. Uh, if you were using React without JSX, it would look very similar. Or if you were trying to do something with pure jQuery, it would also look pretty similar to this. He starts by selecting the SVG element and D3 selects, if you've ever worked with jQuery, raise your hand if you've worked with jQuery before, D3.select is the same as doing dollar sign and then writing a uh, CSS selector to select a direct reference to your DOM node. He then uses this SVG to append a grouping element, which is similar to in SVG land, a grouping element is pretty much the same as a div, except it comes with a few, a lot fewer defaults. It's kind of just helps you group things together and work with them in a group to move them around or whatever. He adds a transform, which is like an attribute to trans that moves um, a group to whatever position you set. And then he's appending another grouping element to render an axis inside. So D3 axis bottom renders an axis. Another grouping element renders an, ax an axis on the left side. And then he does what is probably the most confusing part of D3, which is binding data to the DOM and using that, using the enter exit update lifecycle to keep everything up to date. Basically what's happening here is g.selectAll takes the grouping element and selects every rectangle with a bar class inside that group. None of them exist yet, but he's binding data to them and then using dot enter to append a new rectangle for every new data point that's entering into the visualization. You can think of this as basically saying, here's my data, loop over it. D3 uses this daisy chaining semantics to make that happen. And it's kind of confusing, but once you start thinking about it as just loops that are going through data, it becomes a lot easier. And we're not going to be using this, but it's important for you to be aware of it and kind of understand how it works because it's going to help you in the future when you're looking for examples of D3 code and trying to translate it to React. Everything that you see here that's colored yellow right now, we're going to be doing that with React. 